Welcome to the review of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Dungeon Master Assistant Volume 1 Encounters. This is a utility that was developed by SSI which helps Dungeon Masters of the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons system create their games. This of course is not an actual game. This helps with the tabletop game for Dungeon Masters. It contains rules and different information and bits dealing with encounters for Dungeons and Dragons. So the first thing you'll see on the main menu is we can actually roll dice with this. So that would be a nice alternative for a Dungeon Master if you had a computer sitting next to him while playing the game. Instead of requiring the actual dice, you can type in the type of dice to roll and the computer will do it for you. In fact, you can do even dice types that don't exist, like a 1d3. You can even include plus variables. There's also a treasure editing ability, so you can see existing types of treasures, at least the categories, and create new ones. It is a little cryptic because the treasure names are basically just letters, but that's how the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons system worked. So once you go in to edit a treasure, you're presented with a menu of copper pieces, silver, electrum, gold, platinum, and gems and jewelry. And you can adjust the amounts that would potentially be generated for the players. Now keep in mind, this is just for encounters. There's actually a separate module or utility to do the actual treasures. But let's say, for example, we pick electrum pieces. It asks us the chance for this to occur for this particular treasure type. And then you say how much money, the variables. You can either do a set amount or you can use a dash and it'll generate an amount. You'll notice here we typed 5 through 20, but it happened to do 20,000. So I discovered that you have to actually put an asterisk in order to keep it to simple values and not have it be a multiplier times 100. It's nice that it does include that note right on the screen. You can also, as I mentioned, change the jewelry and gems. So here we're going to say a 20% chance of two jewelry, and that's a set variable. Or you can put a random amount and you'll notice the asterisk doesn't really apply here, even though it claims it would. I put 2 through 10 without the asterisk, and it still only did 2 through 10. That was really the only faulty documentation I found in-game. You can also include magic items, and it does it based on category. So here we say there's a 30% chance of doing 3 rod, staff, or wands. And again, this utility does not include the specific treasure types that you can edit. It does have the ability to print the treasure, which we tried here, and of course I don't have a printer since I'm playing this on a modern machine. And there's even an option on the main menu to include an extra line feed in case your printer required that. You can also add to an existing treasure type. And if you specify one that already exists, it tells you it already exists. So you won't accidentally wipe out an existing treasure. Now we're going to the monster editing phase, which of course is the core of this utility. So it has a nice search feature where you type in a monster name and it jumps you to that point in the list and then you can browse and find the specific monster. And then once you start editing it, you see all the details about the monster. And the nice thing is it does have edits on the field. Like here on the move, I tried to type a 7 and it wouldn't take it. I had to actually hit 7 and then inches and then it actually took it. So that's a nice feature to help protect you from typing in something dumb. But of course you have all the monster stats like armor class, movement, hit dice. You can even do fixed hit points and put in an associated hit dice. And I'm not going to be discussing a lot of the rules of the game. For anyone not familiar with Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, the second edition, you may want to look up those rules. This utility was released in 1988, 
So, as I mentioned, it coincides with the second edition of AD&D. You have the ability to get on-screen help for certain parts of the program, which is very handy. Here, for example, on Treasure, we're going to try to make a modification. So basically, you put in the treasure types, and you'll see later what happens when monsters are randomly generated. You can use commas to have up to six treasure types. You can also alter the number of attacks, the Thaco of the monster, which is their chance to hit armor class zero. You can put in damages. In fact, you can add several damage types. And it even has a C below comment because you're going to be printing these out as a dungeon master. So you could have very descriptive text and type in anything you want. This is special attack and special defense. That's what SA and SD stands for. You can type in anything you want up to 37 characters here. For example, bitch slap. Or you could just simply say C below if it's greater than 37 characters. There's a magic resistance field, which standard means just normal saving throws. Otherwise, you can put in a percentage, such as drow elves. They have innate magic resistance. You can alter the intelligence, which is categorized. And that's pretty handy because you can basically toggle through them all. You can put in the alignment type, or if it's variable, the size of the monster, if it has any type of special. And then you can indicate the experience value. You can even have it increase the experience based on the number of hit points. And then you can also include what type of race this thing is similar to when you choose the thief class. And then you can also categorize the spells. And here you indicate how many spells are memorized per level. The leftmost being level one and the rightmost being the highest level spell. The utility does include more classes and races and things of that nature compared to the SSI gold box games. So that's really cool. Here's just another example, a Thrykreen. So the utility comes with all the default monsters in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which is extremely handy, but you can also include your own types. For example, I'm just creating a monster called D Forte and you can make it be anything you want. So again, that's extremely useful as a dungeon master, creating these adventures and modules for your players. The next area in the utility I want to discuss are what's called tables. The tables are encounter tables. Here we're going to edit an existing one, and we're going to choose the monster. And you'll see it has what's called a main monster, and the reason why it's main is because sometimes there'll be other monsters that follow it along. There's all kinds of rules as well. You can indicate the chance of the monster appearing. You can have multiple groups appear within this table. Here we're going to add a lich. And you could either do a set number or you can put a random amount. Here for example, one through three. And you can keep adding You'll notice they even have preset levels for certain classes. Here we have a level 14 cleric that's a human. You can make any combinations you want, which is pretty sweet. Now toward the bottom, you'll notice there's options and they're pretty cryptic variables like CN, MM. You basically have to refer to the manual to see what these are. 
Speaking of which, this is the cover of the physical manual. And page 17 happens to discuss all the different variable types. So CN means current number because you're dealing with variables. I'll just run through the list here. DM means dependent monster. IM is independent monster. NA is number adjustment. SN stands for set number. IR means independent random. DR is dependent random. CR is conditional random. DV, dependent variable. IV is independent variable. And TE is table entry. So as you can see, there's quite a few different variables that you can use in order to completely control the randomization of the monsters. It's pretty impressive. Basically what you're doing here is some pretty simple programming. Also, MM stands for main monster. But here you can see that I'm nesting if statements and they can even be based on chances. And the computer will take this into account when generating the monsters. Pretty impressive. But now we're going to move on to the most exciting part of the utility. And that's generating encounters. So you can do it either by monster specific encounters or you can do it by tables. This time we're going to show a monster specific. So we're going to type in a lich takes you to the search results and you pick from the list. So here we're going to have one lich appear. You just say yes and then you can edit and display the encounter. And basically all of those rules that had been set for the lich monster are executed. So all the randomness, all the variables, they're all taken into account. And then of course you would just print this out as a dungeon master on your printer. The utility does not have the ability to use the mouse, but if you look at the bottom of the screen, it shows you which keys to press in order to navigate. But look at how amazing this is. It randomly generated the spells even that the Lich would use. So it includes every single spell that's in the Dungeon Master's Guide or the Player's Guide, and it randomly chooses from them. In fact, here you can see this Lich has two hold person spells memorized at the same time. So it even goes into that much detail. You can even type in your own notes because of course you're going to be sending this to a printer so it can be anything you want to say. And as you're making your adventures you could have multiple encounter types set up and randomly generate them and then save them. From the menu you have the ability to save the encounter. And it's that specific instance of the encounter. And you could either save it to a floppy diskette or the hard drive. So you just type in the file name, up to eight characters of course, because we're talking DOS times here. And it adds an extension of ENC at the end. So then you can use recall to load it. Either reload from a floppy diskette or the hard drive. You do have to type in the file name without the .enc on the end, and it'll automatically add it. And there you go. It pulls it right up for you to print again. So as I mentioned earlier, there's also another way to generate encounters, and that's by the table. Essentially, a table is a category. Here you can see the different types of monsters or the terrain types, like wilderness hills that's cold, Wilderness Swamp that's cold, Civilized Forest that's tropical, even Astral and Ethereal Plains. So once you choose the table, it asks you if that's the encounter you want. It just randomly loops through the different types based on their chance of appearing in that terrain. And that's defined by the table editor. Once you find the encounter you want, you just say yes. And then the utility will automatically generate that number based on the random values. Here we said do merchants and it happens to have 182. So when we say edit and display, look at these results. 
it has randomly generated 182 monsters and given specifics. Here we have 14 that had lances. Here's a level 7 fighter, level 2 fighter. It mentions how much treasure exists and that they're found in their lair. Basically, their lair means their home turf. There's 32 mercenary guards with armor class 4. They have a lance that does 2 to 7 damage, a sword 1 to 8 damage. They even have a medium war horse with 18 movement. All of this was randomly generated based on the rules. How amazing is that? If any of them were spellcasters or had magic items, that would be listed. It tells you how much treasure you get based on gold, silver, electrum, etc. How much experience you get for killing them. Here we're looking at some water and you'll see some weird things like lizard men and merchants and berserkers. But then I realized they're talking about them being on ships. So then it was like, ah, okay, that makes sense. So you can even encounter things on the ocean that were ships. See, here's some druids where their spells were randomly generated. I mean, this utility is amazing for dungeon masters. Think about how much time it would save you. You would just put in the variables, just a few items, and it would generate all of this detail for you. You could either have gigantic battles or you could just do simple few encounters. And since you can add your own monsters, that makes this even more powerful. Here we're doing some encounters in the astral plane. So you can come up with things like Elder Titans and it gives details like Invisit Will talks about their magic user spells. Here's a storm giant that happens to accompany it. So now we're going to go ahead and update one of the tables. So we'll just choose one of the existing ones. Here's a level one monster table. And again, all of these are preloaded with the utility when you buy it. But here you can see it shows the numbers, the percent chance of them being found in layer versus not in layer. If they're rare, the chances of it happening, pretty impressive. The other thing that would be cool about this is if you were playing around the computer and the party goes off to a certain area, you could actually generate the encounter on the fly and the dungeon master could basically create battles randomly right there in front of the player characters. You'll also notice there's a level and a generation option. The level indicates how difficult the monsters will be for the given area. And generation is either short descriptions or long descriptions. But even the short gives enough detail so that the dungeon master would know exactly what to do with this monster. You just may not get full descriptions on everything. The last thing to mention about the utility is the ability to back up or copy your data. Very, very useful if you're creating everything on a hard disk and you don't want to lose everything you've done. So you can copy it to floppy diskette based on values you previously typed in. It'll even format the diskettes for you. So I hope you've enjoyed the review of Dungeon Master's Assistant Volume 1, Encounters. And I'll see you next time.